Uh, I took a little bit of a ride today. Thank you. I appreciate you. You are so awesome. I took a little bit of a ride today, y'all. And let me tell you about it. So I went down to the office and worked really, really hard today. And then I had some coaching calls. Uh, I've been up since five o'clock this morning. And then I rolled out, right? So I rolled out because over the last few days, it's been very, very warm here in the United States of America, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan specifically. Uh, and my office is in Midtown, downtown Detroit, right? And so you roll the windows down, you got your car clean, you chilling, you riding out in the Porsche. Uh, but also on top of that, I've been working with the city of Detroit uh, because I've been, as I talked about on the Millionaire Morning Show a few days ago, been working on buying up entire blocks, entire neighborhoods, uh, and then redoing those neighborhoods accordingly. So, for example, specifically, uh, building out uh, new homes, infrastructure, because I largely believe that the best way to solve for an issue in a city is to get to participating in it yourself. Don't donate to some kind of community service because 95 percent of the money that you donate to a nonprofit organization actually goes to the organization. Furniture, salaries. Uh, structural costs, moving cars, whatever. And then another 5% or the rest of the 5% actually goes to whatever cause you're donating it to, right? And so I'm not telling y'all not to donate to nonprofits, but I'm just kind of giving you the skinny on what most nonprofits operate like. It's a for-profit business. A lot of people profit from it. Uh, and maybe 5% of what you donate actually go to the cause, right? But I'm working with the city, right? And so I'm looking at different blocks. I'm looking at different blocks on the east side. I'm looking at different blocks on the west side. And... Um, I'm doing my due diligence, right? So as I cruise through the city, I actually go through all of the different addresses and then the surrounding neighborhoods behind the places where I could possibly buy up entire blocks in order to be able to rebuild and then put up homes, tiny homes, uh, different things like that. I go and look at the schools. I look at the infrastructure. I look at the different people around it. And it broke my heart, right? I mean, every single time that I ride in, certain neighborhoods because just like any city uh detroit is awesome downtown is awesome cork town mexican town greek town midtown uh and then other neighborhoods like sheriff forest uh the bagley neighborhoods palmer woods palmer park all of that other type of stuff absolutely phenomenal places to be and i think that uh it's completely on the rise and then for those of you that are uh, familiar with the Detroit area. We call it Metro Detroit, and then it has all of the surrounding suburbs uh, that's doing really well also. But there's a, a lot of pockets, just like any major city, of a lot of spaces where it's absolutely positively looking like a third world country, right? And so as I I've, as I navigate through these different places, and I'm, and I'm trying to evaluate, okay, Anton, uh, what are you going to do? Because this is a significant amount of money that you're going to have to spend in order to do this if this is a project that you really want to participate in and rebuilding your community and all of that, right? And so here's, here's the problem. As I drove through these neighborhoods, let me tell you, the people that actually lived in the neighborhoods, they didn't give a fuck about them. I mean, they didn't give a fuck about those neighborhoods. They didn't care about cutting their own grass. I seen uh, grown people, young people. Um, they was they would throw down, you know, a drink or whatever, and then they would just throw it on the ground. I seen a guy literally throw uh, a glass bottle and it just burst on the ground, and that's just the end of it. And he just walking away, and it's just chilling. I mean, like. Don't give a flying fuck about what's happening in that environment. And so for me, it's a come to Jesus moment, right? Because then I'm thinking like, well, if I come in here, right, and I'm trying to do something, it's going to be a similar situation and what I tried to do before in which when I leave at night, it's a possibility that they're going to take everything new that I put into it, right? Secondly is... Why would I put resources and money into things when you don't even show any kind of pride or care 
in your own little spot, your own little home, your own little neighborhood, wherever it is that you you lay your head at night. Why should I care more about it than you care about it? Why should I be more focused on what you got going on when I know that in this particular block, on this particular neighborhood, and the police is warning me, warning me and they say, Anton, you don't even want to, that ain't even what you want to do over there. And I say, well, but they need the resources. They need the help. And they're like, man, they don't give a fuck. That's, listen, they trying to turn whatever it is that you build into a new bando, into a new, a new dope spot. And then all we going to be doing is pulling up with the raid van, trying to make sure that it don't get any worse than it already is. Which kind of led me to the conclusion that everything and everyone is completely fucked up. Now, conversely, on the other side of that coin, check this out, right? I'm driving and I stopped by the market and I usually get some kind of new liquor, right? So today I picked up what's called Jackson Morgan and it's Southern cream, peaches and cream liquor made with Tennessee whiskey. Really, really great, right? Really good thing, right? Um, it is 15% alcohol, tasty, good, tried it, awesome, A1, right? Stopped by the restaurant, Jay Alexander's on my way to the crib, uh, picked up some stuff, right? When I stopped by the market in order to get this, and I'm talking to the people and they know my name, hey, Anton, or whatever, you got an Indian guy in there, actually a, a white guy owns it, it's a black guy over here, and then uh, when I had pulled up to the market, it was a woman, and she pulled up in a Suburban, right? And I'm like, man, that thing is so big, I couldn't drive it. And she's like, wait a minute, you just got something out of the front of your car. Ain't no engine in there? I'm like, no, it's electric. So we sit there and we kick it for five minutes. And she's like, wait a minute, aren't you the guy that's building a house over here? I'm like, yeah, but I've been over in this area for about 20 years. And so we make a small talk. She's like, I'm Sam, short for Samantha. Ha, ha, ha. And so I tell her my name is Anton. Uh, and then we go about our way. We go in, I buy my liquor, and then I come out. And she's a white woman, obviously, and so on and so forth, right? And then as we walking out, um, or as I'm walking out, I'm walking out first, and then she hurry up and catch up to me. Hey, uh, you know, me and my husband and my husband's friends, uh, my husband has been raised out here his entire life, his whole family, and she starts naming some of their last names because over in my community, a lot of people know each other, and so you kind of know each other by last name or right whatever, right? And so she started naming everybody's last name. She's like, "They own, we own all of the, most of the properties around this particular lake, and we own this lake, and we own this lake. Hey, let me uh, exchange information with you, and then we'd love to get you over, you know, to hang out on the, on the water and on the lake. Um, you know, we got the boat. We're going to be bringing it out this weekend and stuff like that. And so we exchange information and so on and so forth. So I'm going to give her information to Rita or whatever, and then we're going to make friends with Kool-Aid, right? Think about this shit for a minute. When I drove through and I stop at the gas station, of course, I got that burner on me, right? Stop at the gas station. You're going through different neighborhoods. You go through the hood that you was raised in. Even people that seen you and know who you are, they ice grilling you. People that look like me, right? Looking at me, staring at me. Looking at me as food. People that look like me, when you're driving through, I didn't have a Rolex on, I had the Apple Watch on, it didn't matter, you know who got money or whatever, but they look at me and they say, fuck this nigga. Think about that. The very, they don't know who I am, they don't know the fact that you're actually trying to create a better environment and raise the property taxes, gentrification, fuck that, fuck that nigga. That's what they looking at me as. And then I get out here with Sam, short for Samantha, and within 10 minutes of me meeting her, having a conversation, going in and picking up my liquor, right? Coming in before my 41st birthday, she's already inviting me and my wife over into their boat um, because they own multiple different properties across on the lake.